Hello, welcome back to my Thomcraft 4.1 tutorial series. So, we've been trying to do the Node in a Jar, and last time we made that new Obsidian Core Wand, which can hold 75 of each aspect, which would be enough to put a node in a jar. So, let's see how we actually do that. There's a node not too far from here. Got it marked on my map. I don't think it's too far from here. Farther than I thought it was. Alright. Coming up on it now. There it is. So, it's got 40 Aqua and 40 Terra. That's not bad. That's not a bad node to move. So, how do we actually do that? Well, let me chop down some stuff. Alright. Clear out some space around the node real quick. Okay, so if you look into our Thaumonomicon, we go to Node in a Jar on the Basic Information tab. We see it's glass on the bottom. Actually, you can probably see that at all, but it is glass on the bottom. Glass in the, in the center surrounding the node, glass on top, and then slabs at the top. So, let's see if we can make that kind of a construct. So, here's the node. Okay, here's the node right on top. So, there's the center. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Hang on one second, I've lost sound, I'm not sure why. Okay, I checked the video, I guess it's just my headset that lost sound because the video is fine. So there we go. We are going to continue to surround the node. And on top, we're going to put slabs. Any kind of slab should work. Basically, we're making a giant jar around the node. So now we take our wand and I don't have that obsidian wand. Um, I didn't want to go around and charge it, so I cheated in a thomium wand, which has a hundred of each aspect. It's already charged. It's like the gold banded greatwood wands I've been putting in there whenever I need it. So here we go. Right click. It shrinks it down and makes no Najar. What do you do with that? You break it. Perfect. That node is now in the jar and we can go back to the base. I'll meet you there. Okay, I wanted to show you something. I made a change to the farm. I put a piece of glass over the water. And the reason is that um, there was a piece of cotton that I dropped in the water and my harvest golem was freaking out about how to get it. He does not seem to be able to pick up things that are in the water. He knew it was there. He'd run around and run around and run around, but he couldn't pathfind his way to the cotton that was in that water. So I put a piece of glass over there. The water's still there. He's got a place to stand now, so he can eye the entire farm. So I think that's how we can solve the problem of the straw golems being range limited. And I planted nether wart. According well, that's not grown, so, but I think it should be able to harvest another wart too. So we'll find out in a little while. But that's not what we came back here before. We came back for here for this, this node. So you take your jar, you put it down somewhere, and you left click, right click, shift left click. Do you break it? Okay, I should probably read. 
Let's read the Thalmanomicon and find out what we do with these things. While trapped, the node is kept suspended and will not regenerate V, nor can V be drawn from it. I knew that. Clicking on it with a wand. Okay. There we go. So, there it is. A wand that I can tap into now. A wand, a node I can tap into now. And we have successfully moved the node back to our base where it can be useful. There we go. We've got some more Terra now. Not enough. But it'll regenerate. Okay, so that's how you move a node. Let me go check into what else we're going to do this episode. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think we're going to make this wand recharge pedestal. It's a way of recharging your wands, and it's very helpful to put in your base after you've trapped some nodes. So, I've got that research now, and it's in the Thaumaturgy tab, huh. right by the wand focus, and we have a new wand focus, by the way, warding, but we're not going to get into that yet. The wand recharge pedestal. It's an arcane infusion recipe. We need 10 orum, 10 permutatio, and 10 precantatio. It's kind of expensive. It needs some diamonds. We need a pedestal, that's why we're going to use that 10th pedestal we built, the gold ingot, and a primal charm. A primal charm is back in Artiface. It's one of the first researches you can get. In fact, you already have it by default. Under basic Artifacing, it tells you how to make a primal charm. It's just Salus Mundus with all six kinds of shards, two ingots, and a ton of ash. It looks like, looks like a full iron wand, 25 of each. So let's get that first. Shard one, two, three, four, five, six. We need gold. Need gold ingots. I feel there was something else. Ah, yes, Salus Mundus. Okay, gold on the side, Salus Mundus in the middle. I hope it doesn't matter which way the shards go, but of course it does. Air, fire, earth. That was not earth, was it? Air, fire, aqua. Air, fire, aqua. There we go. And there we go, a primal charm. So, since I'm remembering, I'll scan this. There we go, lots of nice research points. Alright, back to our Thaumaturgy tab, to our wand recharge pedestal. Alright, we need some diamonds and some gold. There we go, some diamonds. All right, the instability for this is minor, so let's take a chance. Let's just use one of these primal charms. We'll see what happens. So let's see if we can do this. So I need that pedestal. pedestal goes on the pedestal. That just seems weird. Alright, diamonds on either side. Now, when it shows you just two things like this, you want to make sure, if you have it laid out like I do, that you put them on opposite edges like that. That will help you avoid instability. Don't think it's perfect, but um, it's helpful. All right, so primal charm on one end and gold on the other. And there we go. There's the laid out pattern we're going to need for the crafting. 
What about our aspects? We need 10 Aurum, 10 Permutatio, and 10 Precantatio. Well, we got Precantatio from Earth Shards before, so let's go dump a bunch of Earth Shards in the Crucible. Sorry, the Arcane Don't walk across your crucible. The water's hot. Okay, let's see here. 16's probably enough for this. And let's see here. Let's open up Precantatio so it'll pull that. And I hope that means it'll pull all the way back. I should have opened up the Precantatio first. In fact, we're probably... Let me get my tool and check this. Pulling for Precantatio. It's got one Precantatio. And the Precantatio went in there. So it looks like we're good. All the Precantatio seems to be gone. Perfect. So now we need to open up the Vitreous and close the Precantatio. Get me an empty hand. Ah, my keyboard is being funny. Okay, here's Vitreous, which I'm going to open. And I'm going to close Precantatio. And that should draw our Vitreous in there. I hope. It's pulling for Vitreous, pulling for Vitreous. And our Vitreous appears to be gone. Alright, I think I'm getting the hang of this. All right, so I need to open up Terra and close Vitreous. And then we should start pulling for Terra. Yep, we are. And the Terra starts draining. Perfect, there we go. Let me figure out what's going to help us with the other two things we need. So that got us the Precantatio we needed. We need Permutatio and Orum. 10 and 15 for Orum and Permutatio. So back into our Thaumonomicon. Not that. Aspects of Magic. Where do you get Orum from? Mm, that's a problem. Orum seems to only exist in those ethereal essence things. Well, I hope you like wisp hunting. Alright. You know, Thomcraft villagers trade for these two. So this has two Aurum and two Air. So before I start, if my keyboard will start working, come on. Work. I'm going to... Do I have air somewhere? Work! I said! That's very helpful, isn't it? Work, I said. Alright. I'm going to close this, and we're going to... open the air valve. I'm sorry, I opened that. I don't know why I opened that. All right, open my air valve. There we go, suction for air, suction for air, perfect. So when I throw this, these ethereal essence with air in here, it's gonna pull the air out first. We'll start by getting rid of 16. I didn't feel like doing the math. Alright, there we go. The air is draining right into the jar, which is how it should be happening. Three, four, five. How come you stop draining? I guess we're burning them faster than we're draining them. Okay, there we are. It's all going down. Down. Just 
pulling for air. All right, let's try closing it and opening it back up. Okay, I'm not gonna do this on camera. Be right back once I fix this. Okay, here's my problem. The Terra valve is open. Close that and the air should, there we go. It flows right in there. These pipes are a little bit irritating, I gotta tell you. All right, closing the air. And the suction eventually goes away. No more air. So the orum could be pulled out if we have something to pull it, which we don't yet, but here we go. I will open this and here's where the air can go. It starts flowing, I'm sorry, the orum can go. Get me some jar labels. Label that as orum. And 32, there we go. All right. And that should close off everything we had from the aspects. So, what else did we need? We needed permutatio. So what has permutatio? Aspects of magic. Permutatio is in quicksilver, cinnabar, copper, shimmer leaf, and iron wand caps. And cotton and barley seeds. That's interesting. Those should be easy to come by if you have Natura. Yep, there's Herba and and Permutatio in there. So I'm going to open this valve to give one of them here. Do we have an Herba jar already? Looks like we don't. So in the beginning, these two aspects are probably going to fight over which one gets in there. But that's okay. I'm just going to do it all because um, the whole stack because we should be able to get these down in a minute. All right, so what ended up happening? Here is the permutatio. And we should be able to close that now and open up the second one and get the herba and label that. And then we can check our system. So this has one permutatio this has one herba. So we're going to close that. We're going to open this. Okay. But do you see that it's stuck? We've got permutatio. No, I'm sorry. It's on the bottom. We have herba up here. So this permutatio can't come down. We need to be pulling for herba right now close this valve, open this valve. The herba starts draining and now we have herba, we have permutatio. We're pulling for herba. We appear to be pulling, oh here we go, here it is one permutatio in here. It's very difficult to get these piping systems working right. Okay, so right now it's pulling for permutatio, but we've got an herba blocking it. Oh, I gotta get golems in here. All right, so I'm just gonna break that. And let's put it back. Okay, 
we are pulling for permutatio, but our huh my golem went in the crucible and died. How unfortunate! Poor little golem. I don't know how that happened. Okay. Now we should be able to... Oh, we are full on permutatio. So that's our problem right now. Get some files going. Now it's pulling for permutatio. And permutatio should be empty. All right, so let's close our permutatio valve and open our herba valve. There we go, it drains, it drains, getting our herba in there. Golemancy is definitely the way to automate this system. This is quite irritating to keep fixing like this. Um, Alright, so it's a lot easier if you already have the items that you need. You can make a label for a blank jar in the beginning and then you can make your pipe network pull that by default. But um, that's okay. We'll look into golems in a minute. I can't believe my golem got killed there. I, I don't know what happened with that. Did I push him into the nighter or something? That's, that's so weird. Okay. Where were we? Oh yeah. We were going to build an arcane charging wand station thing. It's probably not what it's called. Thaumaturgy. There we go. A wand recharge pedestal for which we needed 10 orum, 15 permutatio, and 15 precantatio. Got plenty of precantatio, plenty of orum, and uh, plenty of permutatio now. So, there we go. We should be able to do this. Take my wand and start the process. Here we go. Let's draw on the Orum. Let's draw on the Precantatio. Drawing the Permutatio. Taking the gold. That's looking okay. It's taking the charm. That looks okay. Taking the other diamond. There we go. No bad stuff. Perfect. That's what I like to see. So, what can you do with this wand recharge pedestal? Well, I'm going to need to rework the setup a little bit here before I can show you that because there's just no space really for it. So, I'll be back after I fix some of this setup. Back in a flash. Okay, I thought I'd show you this, so I remade the golem. If I push him too close, he's going to stand the crucible and just stand there. So he will heal over time. He can fix himself, but if he's kind of stuck there underneath, if he gets, you know, trapped, not a good place for him to be. So I think that's what happened to the golem there. I must have nudged him. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I haven't done any of the base moving yet. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. We're short on time, but I want to show you one more thing about the Wand of Equal Trade. You can also use it for mining. So when it actually trades a block, it's actually breaking the block like if you used a pickaxe on it. So if I trade this block for stone, I'm not going to get amber bearing stone. I'm going to get amber. See? Amber. I have some coal blocks in here in this little 
basement I'm building, so those are not coal blocks, they're just coal. Now this copper will stay copper ore. That's what you'd get if you mined it. Same thing with the dirt. Same thing with the gravel. Everything else in here I think is the same. Just the amber and the copper or, and the and the coal. All right, I'll be back once I finish the basement so I can make a, a the pedestal. One more quick thing I wanted to show you is these glimmers of light. They're coming down from our arcane lamp right through the floor. So because they're not 16 blocks away, this whole basement is lit up even though my arcane lamp is all the way up here. What other lighting system does that for you? So that's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna place that recharge pedestal now and we'll show you how to use it back in a flash. Okay, so after you've gotten some nodes in a jar, you'll basically be doing things like this. Putting your pedestals, opening them up, and putting them on here to surround your pedestal. So let me take my empty wand, put it on the pedestal, and it's just going to sit here and charge automatically from the nodes. As long as you don't put an iron capped wooden wand there, it will never drain your nodes entirely. And we can see it's filling up with aqua right now. It should go to its max and then keep going with all the nodes. So you want to try to get a node, at least one for every aspect. The more you have, or the more of each kind, you know, the faster it'll recharge. But this is a nice way to recharge your wand without having to run around. You get node in a jar, you start charging them, you take the nodes back to your base, and you build one of these things. So let's see here. Okay, I was wondering what was going to happen when it ran out of, out of fire. And the answer is, it just stops until it regenerates. It should continue once it finds more Ordo and Terra. Sorry, and Ignis. But, right click the pedestal to get your wand back, and we can let it recharge. Since it'll be in your base and hopefully nearby, I could put this one in here too if I wanted. I spawned a bunch of these, obviously and because um, it was hard to find some nodes but um, there we go your wand recharge pedestal a nice way to not have to wander around the world to find nodes to recharge your wand because you're gonna have to do that a lot you haven't seen me have to do it so much because I've just been cheating getting new wands but if you're gonna play legit which I hope you are um, you're gonna have to run around a lot to get these nodes so okay Oh, and I wanted to show you why I placed it the way that I did. Um, not understanding why I can't go down. Or up, for that matter. Alright, not important. Oh, actually, I do know why I can't do that. Okay. Um, I placed them like this because if you ever want to move them again, you're going to need to make sure you've got a 3x3 three three place around here to put glass. If you put the nodes right next to each other, then you're not going to be able to move the node again. Now, sometimes moving the node can damage it, so you don't want to move nodes more than you have to. You want to try to place them where they're going to be. But, um, you know, eventually it should be okay. So that's why I place things the way I did. Um, I don't know the range of the pedestal. I'm imagining they're better than one block, but um, don't really know. But this looks pretty nice for it. I do think that the nodes have to be on the same level as your wand. Not 100% sure, but pretty sure. Okay, that's a good wrapping up point. Catch you next time.